one. Hi, Steve Summers uh, with Eric Scopel and Robbie Boydston for Reduct.com. We're in the second week of practice. This is Monday. Uh, although we didn't get to go in and watch practice, we did uh, get a chance to talk to some players and coaches. So let's talk uh, first about uh, the, the last person who was out here, which was Marcus Mariota. Eric, what did he have to say? Well, I think one of the things that was interesting is he was about 30 minutes after everybody else and coming out, and, and, and he said that was partly due to the fact that he was working with Scott Frost on some under under center drills. So you know, that begs the question of, you know, obviously next level, pro level, he's going to need to do some of that maybe. Is that what they're working on, or are there going to be some new wrinkles this year, one of which might be under center, which is kind of a different look from a team that's so used to playing under shotgun? Well, we have to thank Mr. Boydston here for bringing that question up to uh, Marcus. Uh, first, uh, someone asked Marcus why he was late. said, well, he was working uh, on some things with Coach Frost, and Robbie, of course, asked the obvious question, what was he working on? Robbie, what else did he have to say? Marcus uh, talked a little bit about uh, that he did get peppered quite a bit actually with pro questions again and, and, and talked about you know whether or not he feels a little bit uh, you know disheartened that he's not in the draft going forward or anything like that but he did say he's kind of put all that in the back of his mind it seems like he's really focused going forward he's, again they talked about his weight uh, seems real comfortable with his weight uh, hasn't noticed any issues yet again which is a, a real positive sign um, and is really trying to kind of develop himself more as a vocal leader is what he was talking about and and uh, he said it's still a work in progress for him. We'll see how that kind of develops uh, over spring and, and going into fall camp because uh, obviously being you know the head guy there, you want to see the leadership go front and center with, uh, with your quarterback. And Marcus really is kind of taking that upon himself to, to be that guy uh, during his redshirt junior year. Well, uh we have the complete interview with uh, Marcus uh, that will be posted up on EDUC. Uh, we'd hope to have a couple of players uh, um, uh, to talk to today. Unfortunately, neither one were available, but we did uh, uh, were able to talk to Coach uh, John Neal. And, and uh, Robbie, you were over there talking to him. What do you have to say? Uh, coach Neal was talking a little bit, of course, the secondary coach there. Uh, I asked him a little bit. Coach Helfrich talked about putting a lot on these guys early on, a lot in terms of new terminology in terms of, of trying to grasp the new schemes. Uh, it says they're really throwing a lot at them, and, and you know, some people are, are grasping it, some people aren't grasping it as well. Asking Coach Neal that same question, Coach Neal said that he feels his position group as a whole really is uh, ahead of the curve uh, compared to the rest of the team there. I got a chance to ask him a little bit more about the JC transfer, Dominic Harrison, and how a guy like him coming in, even though he's had more experience at a higher level, whether or not that's, that's helped him with the acceleration process or anything like that. And he actually said no, that uh, in many ways Harrison really really is a true freshman right now in terms of learning everything, whether it's uh, the scheme, terminology, what have you, and that he's really just, he's got to put continue to put the effort in. He's noticed a lot of good effort from him, but it's it's putting that effort in and, and trying to see if that's going to come uh, come out on the field. They're, they think they're uh, scrimmaging later this week, so uh, we'll see, as he said, uh, what separates the men from the boys when that happens. Well, one guy that he has no doubts about and he gave him an A-plus was Ifo Ekbre Olamu, uh, a guy he said was uh, someone he could point the other players to on how to do everything right. And, and um, uh, so uh, talking about last year's recruiting class, obviously the two big uh, uh, gets that for this 2014 class were keeping Marcus Mariota and Ifo Ekpre Olamu. Uh, now let's go talk a little bit about what head coach Mark Helfrich had to say. Well, I think one guy that was brought up basically in everybody, it sounds like, was Eric Dargan. And, and actually, Robbie and I mentioned him a little bit on the podcast yesterday and kind of that development. And, and it sounds like he's, he's, he's really kind of turned that corner a little bit. And, you know, there were concerns last year, obviously, with the suspension at the end of the year for some uh, whatever, I don't know, we don't know the details of it, but for some, some things off the field. And it sounds like he's, he's become a leader this year. Uh, Marcus said he's been intercepted three times so far, and, and Eric has two of them. So that speaks a little bit to the, to the on-the-field on the stuff that we've seen out of him. So uh, that's another guy just to be kind of aware of, one of those, you know, a few guys who have a lot of experience in the secondary this year and, and a guy who's obviously going to become a leader, I think, going forward. Well, in fact, uh, John Neal mentioned that he thought that uh, what he noticed about Eric uh, uh, Dargan was that the maturity levels in, uh, in, is, is up, uh, that he's he, he learned a lot from the problem that he had at the end of the season last year, and he's uh, definitely moving straight forward. Uh, did Mark Elfridge have anything more to say that you... 
Oh, I just found it interesting that, you know, as much as they talk about getting the players developed and, and, and really trying to get them a hold of everything, really what he mentioned was them getting better as coaches as well and trying to get that cohesive unit together earlier on. Again, you're bringing in, even though he's been familiar with the program, you've got Don Pelham promoted to defensive coordinator this year. That's a, a, a new position for him. Um, and, and trying to make sure that everything kind of falls, you know, under one umbrella with Coach Helfrich, that, you know, as they continue down the ladder, that everyone's in sync, everyone is cohesive with what they're doing. And uh, that makes for a better coaching staff, and that way they're able to, to kind of teach these players. John Neal said that very same thing about, you know, it's their job to go out there, and they can, they can give them that, you know, the tools and everything, but they've got to ensure that they're making the effort to kind of put that into motion and see those results on the field. So, um, you know, as much as that this is a big deal for the players, it's also a big deal for the coaches to kind of rough out some edges and, and try, like Eric mentioned, try something new, uh, going something under center, something like that, uh, see what possibilities may lie ahead. Well, uh, Oregon, of course, has a policy of not talking about injuries at all. We saw some walking wounded walk by uh, 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 in, in both cases. The, the players were on crutches, but were, were under their own power for sure and not, uh, didn't appear to have any kind of a, uh, any kind of a, a, a boot on. One had a, a knee brace, yeah. but he was putting uh, uh, weight on his, uh, when he was taking his steps. Um, yeah, Farrell Brown being the first we saw in crutches. Elijah George, offensive lineman who just finished his redshirt year, was the player with the brace. We don't know the specifics. This is the first I've seen of either of them coming out like that. Uh, also saw Darren Carrington come out with what looked like a, a sling. He's another redshirt player. Still a long way from the season. Probably won't impact anything there, but probably good for those two redshirt guys to get some snaps and some experience this spring. Well, uh, again, uh, uh, Tyler Johnstone, people asked about Tyler. It, it did appear that he came out yeah. and he had his pads on and sweaty. Looked, looked sweaty. So whatever it was, he'd been working. And uh, uh, so, but, you know, the, the thing about spring ball, when, when I see guys that were like Brown and uh, George for the fall, for fall camp, I really don't think too much about it because uh, it's a long ways. Sure. And particularly when they're putting weight on, on uh, the limb that might be a little bit dinged up, and, and uh, didn't really even have any type of appendage or any type of device holding his legs together. Yeah, he picked He's, his crutches up when he went down the stairs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, was, he was taking it easy down the stairs, but uh, yeah, yeah, it yeah. doesn't look serious. And sometimes those are, are very precautionary things that they do, and so uh, probably not too much to be concerned about. Well. It's a beautiful day out here today. Uh, finally, springtime has arrived. It's going to be a nice day uh, tomorrow, too. I, I don't know what it's going to be like for the rest of the week. Eric, you'll be here for the rest of the yes. week. Wednesday, Friday, I will be here, so be checking out. I will be, uh, again, trying to focus on some of those new guys that we maybe, maybe don't have a whole lot of information on and kind of what they've done so far. Uh, Tyrell Robinson, a guy I want to try to talk to. Danny Mattingly, maybe one of those type of guys. So I'll uh, be checking EDUC on Wednesday and Friday for those reports. Now, uh, Robbie, switching gears to recruiting, we uh, think we spotted a guy walking through that may have been here on an, on a, an unofficial visit. Yeah, we may have spotted Calvin Throckmorton, again, an offensive line prospect for Oregon right now out of Washington. Uh, looks like we saw him walking around here right after practice. Uh, we'll have more with him. I'll give him a call, uh, see what I can get, uh, get with him after the visit, see how that went through. He did tell me a couple of weeks ago that he would be planning on coming out here, didn't have a specific date. Looks like we... Uh, ended up, up, up running right into him during his visit. So, uh, of course, can't talk to him during this time, but uh, definitely a kid that uh, Oregon's been keeping an eye on, a local kid, Northwest kid, that uh, they might be able to uh, pluck out of Washington there. So uh, we'll keep an eye and, and see what he has to say post-visit. Well, if I was a recruiting coming here, uh, certainly the, a day like today, today, today would be a perfect day for it. Well, uh, that pretty much sums up what happened. Again, we'll have uh, all the video that we did uh, for Coach Helfridge and all the video we did for um, uh, Coach Neal, plus uh, all the video for Marcus Mariota. So uh, we'll have some stuff for, for viewers to uh, and readers to, 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 to take in, and, and uh, there's plenty more that they said than uh, what we talked about. So anyway, uh, next week we'll be back, and uh, we'll do the same sort of thing again. So for Eric Scopel and Robbie Boydston, this is Steve Summers for educk.com.